Oh, look, it's always a challenge, and that um, and that was one of one of the reasons we went cropping originally because it, it is um, you know something you doesn't doesn't require nearly as much time to do. But we're get, moving to more cattle. It's it's definitely a bigger time commitment, but it tends to be it's, it's actually much better chunks of of time. Yeah, you might be feeding out for twenty minutes in the morning, or and a lot of the bigger jobs, irrigating or um, or uh, uh, you know. Doing stuff with with cattle, you can do that on the weekends, and um, the model of using contractors um, makes it reasonably easy as well. You get set up and ready for them to turn up. But um, yeah, it's 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 achievable. I guess that's you know in the in the group here today, we've got a number of people sort of aspiring to um, to uh, and um, Dallas as well work off farm. Um, and and run a run a farm, and I guess that's part of the reason why we wanted to do this because there's lots of people around here doing that, trying to do that sort of thing. Um, and 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 we're not saying we've got all the answers, but it is achievable. Um, and uh, but yeah, you do, you do have to think a bit about how you're going to set it up, and you got to you got to you got to want to do it, enjoy doing it, um, because it's yeah, it takes up a lot of your spare time. One, one of the things I did is um, having the kids, our kids are now a bit older, so they're 11 and 13, and both pretty capable on motorbikes, and it actually is easier, easier having livestock because you can actually get the kids to help out with that. So a lot of the time Nick will need to get the cows in. It's like, kids, you just need to come out and give me a hand. Um, so that actually is uh, – and they enjoy it too. Um, so that's actually much easier than the cropping side where you really have to keep the kids right away from the machinery, I find. So, mm. yeah. Thanks for that. Uh, Robert, good question. I'll start with one. Um, I, I was interested in um, the way that you've discussed your um, strat uh, strategy about um, water. And um, I just wondered, you know, with you developing, um, what did you call it, um, drainage issues so you were you were talking in the video about you know potentially developing dams or managing drainage or stuff like that that we this is to be noted that we took this in December last year so um, it's been a while and I'm just wondering how you're going with that aspect of it yeah we've uh, actually yeah done a bit of the, the development um, that we were we're talking about there um, uh, yeah, so I was saying one thing we we we've been wanting to do is get more perennials in, but um, if you're going to do that, it's going to involve more water use and more irrigating. And we've we've always had a reuse system, but it, it all drained to the bottom of the farm, and we could only get the water over over um, about three or four hectares, which we never really irrigated because we never irrigate the whole farm. So we've been relatively flat. We've been able to turn a lot of the drainage around and and putting in a new dam. Um, essentially at the top of the farm, but it's flat, so it's, it's only 10 centimetres higher than the bottom. Um, but uh, we can, um, yeah, so now we can, we'll be able to irrigate much more efficiently and, and, um, and, and uh, yeah, maybe not be so anal about uh, where the water gets to, you know, going out there every 10 minutes to check where the water's got to, uh, be able to re relax a bit, bit more there and use water a bit, bit more, um, yeah, a bit more easily. And then we'll be able to put that water back over the whole farm. So any anywhere we want to irrigate, we can re reuse that water. So uh, that's just bought a pump this week to go on that and had all the lasering done and the dam's half built. So, yeah, pretty excited about irrigating next time. Anyway. Well, I think that's good. Thanks. That's, um, that's great. Yes, we've got a hand, Joe. So you've um, kept your flexibility in your fencing and infrastructure and stuff. Do you ever see a scenario where you would put a crop in or go back to cropping or how would you make that decision? Oh, what I'd actually like to grow more of is um, multi-purpose crops. So I've, I've, we have grown them in the past, so longer season wheats. I'd like to put in a multi-purpose multi uh, canola. So where you can graze them, put them in, you know, in spring for the following year or or in early, um, you know, February or something like that, graze them and then lock them up and either cut them for hay or um, or strip them for grain. So we're, we're still, we've, we've got, every, every paddock has got 10 metre gates into it so we can get header front through 
with the with the front still on. We don't have to cut any. We don't have to cut any fences. Um, we we used to do that, and we got a fire because it picked up some some wire. Um, so you know, there's risks. We want it all set up so contractors can can come on. Don't have to. Yeah, it's easy. There's no, there's minimum risk. Um, they they can get in. That you know, you, you hear them complain about small farms and and um, yeah, getting into tight spots and you get charged more for that as well. So we've just tried to make it as easy as possible. We can still do, do that if we want, and I still want that uh, yeah built into the system so we're. We've got those multi-purpose crops um, to to yeah to do that if if we you know this year we mightn't have any cattle in a couple of months um, so what are we going to do then um, you know either either produce hay for ourselves or um, or hay for the dairy industry around us you can always sell feed in the area eventually maybe not this year but um, yeah so yeah we we more than likely grow a crop again in the future sometime. Yeah, and Joe, um, a few years ago, we did actually go on a trip around Australia. And so we definitely made sure we had a crop in for that because we knew we were quite happy to just leave the farm and not have to worry about any stock. Um, so obviously, if you go away from ex an extended period, you can't really have stock left behind. Um, so yeah, if if when COVID finishes and we can go overseas, I reckon that year we'd be planting a crop. <laughs> the flexibility in farm comes through there very strongly. <laughs> <Yes>. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, that crop was a canola crop, and when we sowed it, I thought it was a failure. So we said, "Oh, we'll just go. We'll leave for three months." And when we came back, it was a pretty good crop. So, um, <laughs> have to say, canola, you should look at it for the first six weeks. It always looks looks scrappy. That's not the first um, piece of luck you've had on the farm, though, Nick. Is it? I mean, that might be the first, but it's not the last piece of luck you've had. Um, you, we were just discussing before everyone came in that. Um, before we came out to do the video, Nick opened the irrigation drains to irrigate his property. And um, tell us about that. Yeah, so we we put in a, a long season um, uh, uh, hunters premium pasture mix, which is which is long season. It's actually biannual, I think, but doesn't normally survive over summer up here. Um, and uh, because 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 they, uh, these guys are coming out to video the place, I thought I'd better give it one more irrigation so it's still a bit of green, it looks irrigated. And um, and then uh, we got that rain in January and it all greened up again, so it didn't, didn't set seed and re-germinate it, just, it just uh, the plants all came back to life and so we irrigated and, yeah, so half the farm uh, we had feed within, with, within uh, three weeks and um, yeah, we've had three, just about to go onto the third grazing of that now. Um, so I was a bit, it was a bit lucky. It was a good, it was a that late, late irrigation made uh, got us through anywhere. I didn't irrigate uh, in mid December. It didn't get through, but that's the sort of thing. I guess you know, lots of dairy farmers are looking at how they can avoid irrigating through through summer when you don't get the productivity and response to the water. Um, and I'd, I'd like to do with. Put, put in perennials, so looking at perhaps Valerius, although I'm not sure about that, or Lucerne, where we can potentially dry it off over summer and, um, and uh, yes, yeah, start it up again in, in February or March and have feed pretty quickly. But, um, yeah, if we can do it with annuals, well, all the better. But I think that, that's, that was a bit of a lucky one and, and yeah, we'll, we'll take that, take that uh, win. But, yeah, can't, can't expect that every year, but that's, that's the sort of thing we'd like to be doing more of. Yeah, that was definitely a win. Mm. Is there any other questions from the audience? Yeah, I've, I've got a question, Kirsty, and um, like sort of family and lifestyle are pretty important um, aspects. But um, I guess more the questions about sort of financial um, rewards and and if you're actually able to make a buck out of it, whether it's through sort of annual cash flow or capital growth or tax or <laughs> all of those things. Yeah, well, we've definitely had tax tax benefits uh, in, in some years. But, um, yeah, look, um, certainly with the cattle, I don't, I don't know how long it's going to last for, but there's there's certainly good good money in cattle at the moment. Um, the difficulty is we, we just trade them, so um, buy and trade. So... 
Uh, we're not breeding them. So as I say, in, in three months, we mightn't have any cattle. I'm not sure how we're going to get back into them. But it's, yeah, it's, uh, I think, I think uh, it's certainly not enough to live off. Um, we're not a big enough area. We, uh, I guess when we got into it, hoped mm. it might be um, an, an income in the future. It's certainly not big enough for that. And I don't know if I could handle the, the risk associated with you know, whether you're going to get enough money this year or not. But it's yeah, it pays for itself and and pays for our home and and uh, yeah, there's some extra cash every now and then to put in the pool or <laughs> one day we'll buy a new car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was that that answered your question. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that's really good. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Dallas. Yeah, I I um probably concur with everything the O'Hallorans have, have said. I've um, been at my enterprise for just gone six years now, so probably your last question, Rob. Um, I've, I've, I breed and I've got quite a, quite a few cattle, but I'm probably only just, you know, getting to a point where things are paying for themselves. And I've been doing a lot of capital improvements. I think my place was probably disused for 15 or 20 years, so um, sounds like the O'Hallorans was, was a bit more workable. Um, so I've, I've put a lot of capital into, you know, getting things straight and level again. Um, and only six years on, I've actually got the earth movers here now executing sort of phase one of my farm plan um, to get ready to irrigate. So, yeah, I, it's a fair slog. Um, that's what I've, I've found. Um, yeah, but it's... Capital growth, yes. My answer to that is yes. Uh, tax benefits, yes. Um, so yeah, me and my wife both work off farm. So I, I treat the yeah you know, when when you're operating at a loss, um, obviously that's where the tax benefit kicks in. But I essentially use that to operate the farm the following year. You know, plus whatever else I'll put on top. But there's yeah, my experience today has been a massive amount of cross subsidisation. But but I think I'm I'm finally you know getting getting over the over the crest of the hill if that makes any sense. Obviously yeah. help 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 by current cattle prices as well. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. And and so we were lucky that we didn't have to do the places sort of ready to go. No major investments required. Um, don't buy much machinery at all. Um, so you know we didn't have to invest in that sort of things, and we're not paying off that. Um, we haven't bought cows either, so um, you know. I guess you've got a herd there now, in Dallas. We, we don't have that, but so we just uh, you know you got to buy cattle every year, and and you buy them sort of. Uh, you know, I guess you expect to to make a return on on every cow that you buy and sell, and we have to date. But yeah, we haven't built equity in the in the in the herd or anything like that. Um, Land values are going up, so that's why we we we've gone more intensive on this farm rather than buying more land and having to manage more land. I'd love more land, but it's um yeah, I don't know. Maybe you should get in now because land prices will continue to go up. But um, who knows? I, I'd be more inclined probably to buy water at the moment than land, and and do more with this property. Um, it's a manageable area. Um, mind you, if the neighbour's place came up for the right place. That, that's that's why we did the found, plan to farm in the first place was because the neighbour's place came up at the right well not not at the right place it turned out but it came up and and we discussed whether we buy more land or intensify what we're doing and we've we've ended up sort of intensifying what we're doing here. Yeah, that was a great. Um, thank you, Dallas, for giving that um, profile of yourself and where you're at with your farm. Um, has anybody else, it brings up a good question about what, what other people are up to on their farms in terms of, um, uh, uh, is everyone in the same similar boat or um, are people doing things differently that you might want to share today? Um, as I say, I'm not from that region, so don't know how, what that might look like for you guys. I mentioned that the start, Kirsty, like I'm, I'm on 11 acres, so it's basically a big town block, you know. But anyway, my so and probably part of the reason why I 
why I asked um, about making a buck or not is that <laughs> my approach has, has been, um, you know, not to make a buck out of it given, um, you know, w we're busy people and, and it's more about sort of lifestyle and growing, for me, just growing a bit of firewood and, and trees for birds and wildlife and, um, yeah, just enjoying the space. Um, so I'm probably a bit lucky, just got um, a, a fella down the road um, with kids who are interested in agriculture. And so they, 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 they've been putting stock on for the last few years. So that helps to keep the grass down and um, saves on, you know, slashing costs, I suppose, or me mucking around with, with stock. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, sorry, Nick, go. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, your, your size block, that's that's fair, fair enough, um, Rob. Um, but I guess, yeah, there's a lot of lot of blocks. Around, oh, less less blocks now, I think they're getting picked up and dairies, dairies sort of expanding, the, the, the bigger dairies are getting bigger and buying land. But over the last few years, there's been a lot of 80 and 100 acre blocks that have done absolutely nothing apart from growing weeds over over a sort of 10 year period. And um, I think that's a bit of a shame. It's not good for the area, the economics in the area, and it's not good for neighbours and um, yeah, just the general prosperity of the area. So yeah, um, uh, yeah, I, I guess want to, yeah, want to show that you can, can do something um, that is, yeah, well, it's not, a, it's not a, it's not an entire income, but it can be profitable, economic to do. Um, and and yeah, have, have our other outcomes to the region, supplying feed to the to you know dairy farmers in the area, or growing beef cattle, or or whatever it might be. But you can still be um, productive for the area, which I think is important. And we've got uh, that's we've got three people here. We're we're trying to get a better beef group together in the area, uh, I guess, because there are. It's a, it's a growing industry in the area. Um, so uh, Dallas and Terry uh, are, are both joined the, um, or yeah, trying to get together with us to initiate a better beef group, which is, yeah, pretty close to, to getting up and running. But yeah, I think that that'll be really useful um, to help us all, yeah, I guess, develop our businesses and 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 do things better and, and work out how to, how, to, how to make the most out of these. And, and it's great just being able to get together with with other people who are doing similar things and talk about what we're doing and and um yeah get ideas and um yeah so really really looking forward to to that getting up and running with these guys that sounds like a great plan um that you've got there nick and marisa um i'm i was interested marisa in your 10 percent um farming um oh 10% vegetation yep. for your farm yep. um, and the planning around that. I'm I'm just interested to know whether this year prov is going to add to that or add to the planning of that. Yep. Uh, no, we've actually got plants delivered and ready to go. So um, Nick's just watered up a little area that was a bit of an awkward plus place to um, crop. Um, so we've just got to yeah get them planted next weekend is the plan. So we've got another few to go in there. Um, and to fill in a few other areas. Um, Nick actually did a bit of a visual assessment of the farm um, through Google Maps, and he reckons we're somewhere between, was it 5 to 10% at the moment of cover, canopy cover from trees at the moment. So So the target's gone up there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, um, yeah, definitely continuing on to plant. And, yeah, we've got yeah a few more going in this year. And, and yeah, I've got a few more areas that um, just got to work out how to fence them before I plant them because um, obviously growing cattle it's pretty challenging because you've got to keep the cattle out of the re-veg areas um so yeah it's yeah yeah still going Nick, forward but yeah yeah a bit Nick, of plant you're crop. a nifty little um nifty person you've got tricks up your sleeve for fencing and stuff like that what are your thoughts or can anybody else give some <laughs> thoughts for marisa on um fencing fencing trees to stop cattle getting in What's yeah, other people's experience? Don't muck around with temporary fencing. It, um, <laughs> it's good while the wires are hot. No, we'll have to put up some proper fencing around it. Mm. Um, yeah, but actually that's another change that we're seeing in the area. There's a number of, 
I don't know, I'd like to see farms like this where we take advantage of the infrastructure, but um, at the same time, we've got the opposite happening. We've got big croppers coming in, I guess, and it's good that someone's buying the land, but there's a significant amount of, um, yeah, re-veg, or not re-veg, it's, it's, it's planted tree lines and stuff that are coming out for the cropping side of things, which is a bit of a shame. Um, and and all, all the infrastructure goes in, all that dairy infrastructure, the, the water lines and the, the, the laneways and the fences, and it's huge amounts of infrastructure that, that are getting ripped out. Um, I guess it's good that someone's making some money out of the land, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of an interesting time from that point of view. Last opportunity for any questions or any comments or anything like that for people. Um, yeah, just on the vegetation stuff, I you know, I think, think there was some incentives years ago. Um, I was just looking at email in front of me now. Vanessa Campbell was at the CMA at the time. Not sure if she's still there or not. So I, I inquired about um, you know funding to uh, create corridors and that sort of thing, but um, the 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 size of the corridors just wasn't conducive to the shape of my farm or you know what what my farm plan or intended farm plan layout was going to be. So interestingly, my my wife is um, oh, I grew up a couple of kilometres south of me here and about five kilometres east of of the O'Hallorans and um, her family planted lots and lots of trees on that property and they're magnificent to look at now uh, when yep. you, the, the farm probably doesn't look as, as tidy overall as when they had it but um, yeah the trees are huge and established and um, yeah I, I intend to do some of that here because basically my place has just got Oh, there's probably two dozen huge box trees, you know, but they're, they're a couple of them are in little nests. But um, yeah, once I've, as I'm progressing my relay out and that sort of stuff, yeah, I will put in some probably narrow belts as opposed to, you know, huge big wide belts. But yeah, it's for the same reasons that O'Halloran's have mentioned. Shade for the cattle is important. Um, my wife keeps saying we need more trees, we need more trees, because that's <laughs> that's what she was brought up on. So um, yeah, that's that's something that we've um, got to got to get into. Yeah, okay, so that's interesting. So for you, the um, the constraints are how wide your corridors um, for funding or incentive or something like that. That's a big constraint for you guys. Um, yeah, because I, well, so I'm not, I do heaps of fencing. I'm, I enjoy fencing actually, which I think it's a, it's a bit of a weird trait. Um, most people <laughs> hate it. Um, so I, I get a fencing contract to come in and knock the posts and then I do all, all the wire work. So um, yeah, I'm not scared of building a fence, but just back then, you know, um, probably like I said I've, I've sort of come over the hill now, um, yeah, capital wise. Yep. So I was seeking any opportunity, uh, but I think the, the the belts had to be 30 metres wide. I think. Yeah. Probably yep. 20, 20 at that stage. No. Yeah. It might be yeah. now. But that's interesting feedback, and um, appreciate that. I I know we're out of time, and it's been a great conversation. Um, I'm happy to stay on. Nick and Marisa, I'm sure, are happy to stay on. But I'll um, just before we leave, just ask you to fill out an evaluation form. If you can click on the um, talking bubble, there's I've I've put a MS Forms document into that. Um, notes section and it should take about five minutes to fill out that'd be fantastic it helps us really because it's national governments um so we whatever we do needs to be reported back and it helps us do this sort of thing in the future so thank you for that but i'm happy to stay on a bit longer so feel free to um i'll stop recording and we'll feel free to have a bit more chat if you want